the exhibition that we're doing is filled with objects that I think will be interesting uh, to people and raise their sense of curiosity about Armenian art and culture. One of the objects that we're really fortunate to have in the exhibition comes to us from Etchmiatzin, and it's actually something that's coming out of the treasury, and it is the reliquary of the Holy Cross of the Hotakarats, which is a reliquary of the true cross that's associated with the monastery at Vayats Dor. It's actually referred to as the monastery of the vegetarians, or grass eaters, I suppose, more literally, because the hermits there, who were the monks at this uh, monastery, didn't eat meat. Um, for those that aren't familiar with what a reliquary is, it's a container that is made to hold venerated remains. It could be of um, the body part of a saint. It could be an object that is um, infused with um, sacred power. And in the case of this object, it was actually made to house what was believed to be a piece of the true cross. We actually know the name of the patron who produced it. Um, he appears at the very bottom of the outside of the frame in a prayer gesture, which is known as an Oran's. It's an early Christian uh, prayer gesture that's used in, um, still in many parts of the East Christian world. And it has a lengthy inscription on the back that commemorates its making, and it actually encourages those that are looking at the object to pray for the patron, which is something that's not unusual when you have inscriptions of that nature. And it is something that we've had translated for the show. With the will of Almighty God, I, Iet son of Hassan, son of Prosh, son of Vasak the Great, from the family of Kagbank, ruled over my fatherland of Shabunink and many other countries with the help and support of Christ and of the Holy Cross of the Vegetarians, in which my ancestors too found strength, and built a tabernacle for its unerasable memory. You who stand in front on this remember in prayers me and my parents, the Prince Hassan and Tahir, and my father's brother, Papak, and all our ancestors and family. What makes it really amazing as an object is that it's probably one of the masterpieces of Armenian metalwork, and it was produced around the year 1300. It's embossed, it's chased, it um, has I incredible detail, and there are numerous figures uh, from church history that appear on the outside. There are two doors that open up that provide this view of the object it was made to hold. So one of the things that I find interesting about the object is that with its kind of precious skin, the um, gilt silver skin that is made to house the object, um, all of that detail, the metalwork, was really made to announce the extraordinary character of the contents it was made to hold. Another object that I'm really excited about having the exhibition comes to us from the History Museum of Armenia but it actually is a door that was carved originally for the monastery at Lake Savan, known as Savanavank. It's dated to 1486, so we know exactly when it was made. And in terms of influence, one of the things that's so striking about the door is the delicacy of the interlaced decoration that covers the entire surface of this panel. The material itself is walnut, so locally available wood, um, but the whole door is covered with carved decoration, and it is so delicate that one almost thinks of it as being wood that's transformed into lace. So it has the solidity that you expect with wood, but the delicacy of the carving is one that really makes you think of other materials. At the very top of the door is an image of Christ in majesty, surrounded by the four signs of the evangelists. And interestingly, Christ is actually seated cross-legged on a cushion, so there is uh, a kind of Eastern influence that comes in. Um, but the door also speaks to the tradition that's being revived at that point of Hachkar carving, where you have the same kind of very delicate tracery, um, almost lace-like carving that's done on stone, whereas here we have it on the um, main portal for one of the more important churches in, um, in the area of Lake Savan. And one of the things that I think f resonates for me is having been to that site um, I know that it is now one of the major seminaries for the training of young priests. And this door that was carved at the end of the 15th century features a central scene of Pentecost, which is the moment when the Holy Spirit descends to the apostles and allows them all to go out into the world and evangelize in different languages. So for me, it struck me as a very appropriate uh, subject for a door that comes from a church that's now connected to the seminary activities for uh, these young Armenian priests who would be going out into the world to practice their, their vocations. 
towards the end of the exhibition, one of the objects that people will be able to see is actually the earliest liturgical curtain that's preserved in the collections at Etchmiadzin in the Republic of Armenia. One of the things that's really exciting about that curtain is that you get to see some of the kinds of objects that you will have seen earlier in the exhibition represented. So you have a sense of the physical spaces, the ritual uses that these objects once had, and the way in which people might have engaged with them. The curtain is actually a printed cotton textile, and it's the kind of thing that would have been used along the trade routes that the Armenians were active on. In fact, this was a curtain that would have been used during the liturgy in the Armenian church to separate the congregants from the clergy during certain moments of the service. It was produced, we know, in 1689, so it's dated, and it was made for a monastery in the Lake Van region. One of the really cool things about it is that it shows on the top level, it's in two bands, and the topmost level it shows holy sites in Jerusalem that were particularly important to Armenians. So a few examples of the places that are called out. This is the tomb of James the Apostle. This is the prison. This is the garden. Mary, Lord God Jesus Christ, this is the resurrection. And then there's a reference to a pilgrim, Ignatius of Eudokia, which is actually the person who might have made the textile itself. This is Golgotha. And then in the band below, you actually have a representation of a church service and this evocation of the liturgy, people watching the celebrants, the hanging lamps that animate the spaces and bring you into the scene as if you're a kind of co-participant in what you're watching. So it is full of these details where you can get a sense of what the liturgy and the service might have felt like, the hanging lamps, you can almost begin to imagine the smell of incense. It's actually a fascinating object full of detail and will be one of the more powerful uh, large-scale objects at the end of the exhibition.